Good day, everybody, and welcome. My name is Mazino Appeal, and you're welcome to the FinTech podcast brought to you by First Bank. And I'm not here alone. Before we tell you exactly what it is we're going to be venturing into today, let me introduce you my co-host, the delectable one and only Tallulah is in the building with me. Mazino, you're making me blush. It's <laughs> nice to see you as always. You're radiating. <laughs> Oh, stop it. I like it. <laughs> but in any case, we're not here alone because today we're going to be talking about something very interesting. And to do that, we need someone who's the expert at it. And I'm talking about none other than Steve Asemota himself. So tell us exactly what your role is at First Bank as the chief data officer. Right. Um, at First Bank, my role is to drive data strategy. Mm -hmm. So everything from data governance, data architecture and engineering, uh, data science, data monetization, uh, mm -hmm. privacy uh, those are the areas of rock that I, I operate on. okay very interesting today's topic to is very interesting because we're talking it is application programming interface and um, we're looking at how we can actually leverage on technology and innovation right now to make it a seamless process and that's why we have Steve here first off let me tell you what I know about API I know it's a shaking of hands mm -hmm. of sort when it comes to applications which we all use every single day mm -hmm. whether you like it or not whether you're buying Shawarma or you're ordering for this or that you're actually using an app and it's not working alone definitely shaking hands with other apps yes and this is what people don't know there's the payment aspects there's the location aspect there are many other aspects depending on what kind of app but that's my layman's understanding mm -hmm. and um, if you give us a better understanding of what it is mm -hmm. perhaps maybe compare it to something real life that we can you know take sample from uh, something real life uh, mm -hmm. okay. but um so apis are just really programming interfaces Right, allows applications to communicate with other applications or systems to communicate with other systems. That's what APIs really are. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a scenario where you go on an e-commerce site to buy a product, mm -hmm. in some cases you might have scenarios where the product image is just on the e-commerce site. Mm -hmm. There's a product backend somewhere else. So when you place an order, a call is made to the backend where the warehouse is validate that the order the product is still in, in the warehouse as it exists you can add it to your cart right and then you go to your address you put in your address you, you make a payment there might be a call also to validate the address that exists to com 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 compute the cost shipping cost mm -hmm. from the warehouse to your destination an api might also be called to do that when you make when you want to make payment api is also called to kind of verify this person has money in the, in the account i even use a first bank account for example Money in the account, uh, the balance is X, is greater than Y, uh, you know, then it's successful and or it fails, depending on what the response is. So APIs are very, uh, clearly very important yeah. um, in the fintech industry. Yeah. So I want to know how far API or the API ecosystem goes towards driving innovation in the fintech industry as we know it today. So what I would say is the API really is creating um, market interoperability. Mm -hmm. allowing communications to happen within and um, between organizations. So today, and in, in, from a financial perspective, is really in line to meet consumer needs. So today, um, a fintech can start up providing just a single service, which bigger players need. So when a consumer requests my service, I might call the fintech service to fulfill that customer's need. Right. So it allows for new products, new services to be created. It allows for um, a very active and vibrant uh, fintech, I would say fintech or financial ecosystem in every market that it operates in. You even have cross-border cross -border APIs. Mm. I mean, you're here, you're using Google services. Google services are not located in Lagos. They're located somewhere else, right? So it, it, it's going to, it's creating, it allows you to monetize the exchange of data really. Okay. That's what it really is. It is a is a because the thing about API is when I call an API, it's an activity action that happens. Either data is exchanged or function is called, things like that. Oh, very, very interesting. Yeah. And so how can uh, fintechs leverage on APIs to grow, scale and mm -hmm. attract more users and also offer more value mm -hmm. to their users? So today, you know, like the first bank um, uh, fintech, uh, the theme this year is uh, banking on partnerships. So it's critical that fintechs in the marketplace leverage relationships with, with, with the banks or other players in the market to create more value for customers. Now, if you look at the value chain, the value chain is quite broad. There are different opportunities for any, any fintech player to kind of, to kind of um, plug into, leveraging the existing APIs that banks um, will, will provide. Okay. Fintechs can also provide APIs to banks and banks can consume. So the money can go 
both ways. So, so the value exchange, it's not just one way. Yeah, it's a value exchange, mm-hmm. and it's really in the interest of the of the Nigerian financial consumer, in the end, that innovation happens, cost drops, there's value created, the economy the economy improves significantly. Because if you look at the future of the um, data economy, it's API that's going to drive that significantly. Mm. Now, I'm very curious regarding this cost that you're talking about and it's dropping. I'm wondering where the costs are currently and who's paying that cost mm. when we use these API structures. So when I said about cost dropping, it's really about pl- number of players, right? A number of propositions in the marketplace. If you have one player, they set the prices. If you have multiple players, you create competition. To competition, prices will drop. Mm-hmm. That's what I meant by cost dropping. Mm. So as more players get to participate um, in the marketplace, in partnership with the banks like us, like Lacars, for example, but there will be more value to the customer, less cost on the customer as well. Okay, Asemota, mm-hmm. I, I've got a very interesting question for you. But first, I wanted to take us back to Asemota's uh, profile here because it has a very interesting one. You're going to like this. Now, he is the chief data officer, like we said, for First Bank, one of Africa's oldest and leading financial institutions that is woven into the fabric of Niger because it's First Bank. Um, and with 17 years of experience, that's, that's this guy here, uh, across industries, markets, he's responsible for driving the bank's data and AI-led transformation agenda within its his portfolio seats the data and core AI functions responsible for providing data and AI driven solutions uh, to the bank and its subsidiaries. An ardent data and AI first proponent, he seeks to derive value for all investments, spending time reviving or rather reviewing research publications for potential real world applications of ideas and theories and the impact it can have uh, transforming Africa. Now, let's talk about that impact, Mm. how big that impact is and Mm. who the players are within this impact, uh, within this uh, um, ecosystem, Mm. the main players. And can individuals actually be a part of that Mm -hmm. ecosystem? So, I mean, it's a broad question, but I'll um, I'll take it this way. Um, So, if you look at the market, um, over the past uh, maybe five years, you've seen a very active, vibrant um, fintech ecosystem. A lot of fintechs have been playing in the retail space, where the banks primarily play, and most of the banks have been playing there. But there's some value proposition that the fintechs have brought in. They've also exposed APIs. They've also consumed the bank's APIs, creating more value for the customer. If you look at the bank's um, first bank, uh, I mean, it was a, was a leader in the was a leader in the agency banking space, the first to roll out agency banking in the marketplace. What well, you've seen over the, over the past few years. Other players also participate, also participate in that space, and there's there's opportunity for collaboration there to enhance the financial inclusion component of the of the CBN's mandate. Okay, um, economic standpoint, e-businesses today, uh, whether you're a player in uh, I don't know where you 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 have an e-commerce pl- um, a shop on your own or you use an aggregator, mm-hmm. you still leverage APIs. There are different third-party providers who can provide minor services that can create that can make them participate as part of the wider economy. So I think um, it's open to all. Is, yeah, I mean, open so, to so all is primarily uh-huh. uh, either as a participant providing services mm-hmm. or as a consumer, right, yeah. uh, consuming services. tolula has got this uh, thing you do. The the what, what's that again? The gift. The, the, yes, I have an e-commerce at, store, so I've actually personally see, benefited see, from APIs I see, I see. and all the fintech companies that are partnering right, to right, offer these APIs. Right, so right. That's really, really exciting. But what I would actually like to know as yeah. well is, can you give us any examples of successful um, fintech partnerships that have leveraged APIs just so we can get a deeper understanding? Mm. I mean, if I look at a simple scenario, today we have um, in our buy now pay later uh, um, mm-hmm. um, proposition we have partnered with both in the Sina and i think clump we've also had we also have partnered with interswitch on a bau basis fantastic but now with uh pay attitude other other players and mm-hmm. even with um the likes of the other fintech players uh, in the marketplace so there, there's an ongoing to, to deliver operations on a daily basis mm-hmm. partnerships are, in, are important mm-hmm. and apis play a very significant role in enhancing those partnerships mm-hmm. and as we kind of roll into our own fintech festival um we'll be emphasizing the need for that partnership for those partnerships even as we expose more um apis to ensure that more services can be consumed by our own, our, our own uh, customers. 
That's fantastic. What I find really interesting about it is that by leveraging APIs, mm -hmm. First Bank is able to offer even more of value to the customer, mm -hmm. therefore putting the customer first. Right. And that's very encouraging. Right. Oh, that's true. Let's look at the uh, innovations that API has exposed the economy to. Um, specifically, let's talk about First Bank and how you guys have put these to use. Mm -hmm. um, are there specific products mm -hmm. that we can um, use as example mm -hmm. to show the innovations behind API? Um, there are a lot. Obviously, there are authentication APIs. Say today. that again? Authentication APIs. Authentication, okay. For example, today you want to go to the, to the embassy, right? The embassy wants to validate you have your financial profile. It's an API exposed by the bank where, they can, where it can be called and the uh, payload of, of your statement can be sent to the embassy. Mm -hmm. That reduces the risk of fraud, gives confidence to the players in the market as well. And allows customers who are valid customers trying to get visas to have a smoother experience. Mm -hmm. So that we, without APIs, that wouldn't happen. You'd have to go to the bank, you'd have to print documents, you'd have to go stamp documents, they have to validate that. So there's a whole overhead. Um, beyond that, let's look at things like um, credit, um, things around income estimation, things around credit score, things like that. All these services can mm. be exposed by APIs. And without trying to brag about it, I think. First Bank is really going to be a major leader in this space mm. as, we, as we go. I, I'm, I'm really curious about that credit bit, the credit mm. score and all of that. How does that work? Uh, what apps shake hands with what other apps to actually provide my specific information to other brands that I might want to borrow money from? Sorry, I'm not saying I'm borrowing borrow money. money. As you know, borrow. <laughs> well, I'd like well, to know well, exactly I mean, who's got my information at this well, point. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with credit or borrowing mm. money. Uh, most of the U.S. is driven by credit economy sure. from mortgages to I mean anything, right? Mm. So, and, and it allows um, people to have expanded balance sheets, right? As long as you can manage your credit properly, uh, it's a good thing to have credit. Um, specifically, though, um, in, a, in a normal scenario, if you look at what happens in the West, when you want to get credit, there's a credit a credit bureaus in the marketplace that, that provide a response. There's an API expose, like the banks call, mm -hmm. and say, okay, I want to, this person is asking for credit. They check their registry to see exactly what your current credit outlay is. Yeah. And see whether I, what you are what you are trying to get is beyond your credit capacity, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so there are also services like that can determine what your credit capacity is. I can call them an API. Uh, then I decide whether I'm going to give you ten thousand uh, dollars, twenty thousand naira, or one million naira. I like ten thousand dollars actually. <laughs> <laughs> one, or one million naira, right? Depends on what the scenario is, what your current what your current capacity, is, what your risk is, and things like that. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I have a question about the challenges because we've talked mm. a lot about the benefits mm. of um, APIs, mm. but I'm just curious to know if there's any challenges that fintechs face when trying to integrate APIs mm. from other companies or other fintechs. So around APIs, you know, because you're exposing key things, uh, the, the, the critical things we include data security. Mm. You know, um, whether you like it or not, um, anytime you have innovation, you have fraud, in, fraud, fraud innovation as well, yeah. right? So once you have APIs exposed, there are always nefarious players in the market that want to take advantage of those APIs to do wrong, to do da damage to customers or to the market generally. That's a big issue. And that's an issue that, um, at least at First Bank, uh, we have a CISO who's focused on dealing with security issues. Um, another challenge might be um, standards, okay? You might have scenarios where standards um, that, that API that are built are not the same. Right. Usually, it's supposed to have a generic approach so that anybody can come with anybody. But some scenarios where that, that doesn't happen. Um, so those are some issues you would, you would have. Um, another thing you have in the market here, in Nigerian market really, is around regulation. Ah, yes. There are strong regulatory constraints, or at least guidance, or, or governance, how you want to put it, that drives how APIs can be mm. consumed, who can, you, who can consume APIs. The CBN has uh, regular directives that ensures that uh, players who consume APIs must be um, approved by the CBN. There's a whole API. I think if, if you read, there's an open banking directive that was, that was provided for you, uh, last year. I think also renewed sometime this year. So there's some directives there. So, not, so maybe I should correct myself. Mm. Maybe not everybody can just show up and use an API. In Nigerian marketplace, you have to kind of, um, um, at least you have a partner with the banks. But are we going there? Are we, are we going to get to that space where mm. everybody who's in business could actually have a an e-business arm like Tulula mm -hmm. and just simply might maybe like uh, have an app that uh, you can order your Akara on mm -hmm. and it's very seamless and simple and mm -hmm. affordable for every individual. Yeah, you will get there, you know. These are... How long would that take? There are many factors that drive this. What are these factors? 
one factor is really maturity market maturity okay um you know technology is is, is going at a very high speed but we are not market is not as mature uh, so as the market gets mature fi is, is expanded you have more players in the, in the financial marketplace these things will happen um you cannot determine how quickly people will adopt some certain things but give or take within a decade, yeah, I, I think, um, because the general posture of our bank, obviously, is to push innovation forward. And I think the general posture of the regulator as well is to do it in a safe way. Mm. So speed is important, but also safety is important. So that, those are the drivers that might influence timelines. Mm. Like, and I want to talk about emerging trends as well, like AI, like the blockchain. Do these emerging trends in any way feed into, you know, APIs? Mm. Um, with regards to fintechs, yeah, yeah. So obviously, I mean, most of you have used um, OpenAI's products, right? ChatGPT and the likes and stuff like that. Um, people use it, their API calls exposed. Uh, they have Open API um, call ex- APIs exposed, mm. whereby you can just call a service and it provide you a response. You want to have a write a paper, you can you can send a question through an API, mm. get a response to paper. You want to do some validation? You can do that. You want to do um, um, what's it called now? Like, like um, vo- voice um, translation? You can mm-hmm. do that. You have translation services today that are API based. I send in English, it gets me back French, thing like that. Yeah. Uh, Tallulah, that's a very interesting question. It has many angles mm-hmm. to it. Now, when you talk about the use of AI and, mm-hmm. and API together, mm-hmm. alarms go off in my head mm-hmm. regarding security. Yeah. yeah. So how secure would our monies or assets or infrastructure be mm. if we put these two together, which is going to happen, which is happening mm. practically? It's happening, yeah. Look, you, you know... Especially in the Nigerian yeah, context. Yeah. You know, the overarching objective is creating additional value at scale for the benefit of the individual, the market and the economy generally. Uh, this comes with risks, okay? So we'll have to, as we scale up innovation, we'll have to think about governance. Yeah, governance is quite critical. I mean, I'm sure you guys have a scenarios or use cases where um, AI is being used for nefarious purposes to yeah. fraud and things like that, impersonation and things like that. These are normal challenges that we face. But they're going to be significant investment in security to manage it. So that's why if you're going to roll AI stuff, governance is quite critical. And I know in the market, in Nigerian marketplace, um, where we're still trying to get ourselves into the, into the, into AI itself, but um, uh, governance will be critical to to be embedded as we try to drive innovation as well. Uh, that will that will limit the reduce the risks, or I guess the impact of the nefarious players um, who have different intentions, right? Mm. Um, all right, Steve, let's talk about a group of people that most people don't always talk about, and that's uh, the unbanked. Mm-hmm. Um, with all this innovation and us going forward when it comes to tech, and fintech in this, uh, to be specific, uh, what consideration for the unbanked? How would they be able to access these API structures and also get advantage or take advantage of it? So, I mean, at First Bank, you know, I mentioned earlier that First Bank was the innovator, really, from an agency banking perspective, one of the key drivers of bringing people into the financial marketplace. Um, and we're doing more. We've done agency banking, but hopefully over time, we're gaining more innovations that allow bank, uh, allow customers who are on bank today to interact directly, not through agents uh, with the financial market. We're leveraging things like AI, different AI capabilities. Now we reduce the risk because one of the challenges is about KYC. It's also about language, mm-hmm. about literacy. There are many factors that drive, uh, that make people um, isolated from financial markets. So we have solved those problems and we're doing that at First Bank. I think you guys will see new innovations coming to the marketplace soon. Okay. Deal with that. Well, we're definitely very excited to see those innovations come forth and come to life. So we know that coming up is the First Bank Fintech Summit and the theme of uh, this year's summit is banking and partnerships. Can you just tell us or give us a little glimpse into what we can look forward to from the summit? I think for First Bank, banking and partnerships is really apt. Um, As your questions around APIs, APIs drive partnerships. We, what we want to do is partner with innovators in the marketplace to bring value to our customers and customers beyond our banks. Because we have one, one scenarios whereby customers who don't bank with us currently can also consume our services, expanding our reach, and, and to, this, to this point earlier, deepening their participation in the financial marketplace. So you see some of the first bank innovative products that we've released. You hear that there are a lot of boot camps happening, there are master classes happening. Lots of things to look forward to, I think. Mm. Yeah. 
very exciting oh, very exciting i'm looking forward to that one um and um i do believe that with that we we've actually milked plenty out of you uh, if we have plenty of time we, we might i have more questions to ask right. but maybe this might be for other consumption right well, i want to say a very big thank you to steve asemota he's the chief data officer for first bank of nigeria and of course he's the most qualified person to give us all the information that we have had from today well thank you very much once again steve um also wanted to say that api ecosystems are actually revolutionizing um financial services in africa and tech companies or fintech companies actually have a lot to gain by embracing these and we're hoping that in the next or near future we're going to see more embrace uh, more collaborations like Steve has told us and well we look forward to um, every good thing that this has to bring for Africa for Nigeria for every single individual so well that's it and we want to say thank you very much for being a part of our show here today we expect to see you guys back again uh, with another very interesting edition of the fintech podcast brought to you by First Bank <laughs>